All right, welcome once again to the weekly podcast we like to call Shoot the Messenger. It's the Shoot the Messenger podcast. AJ here with my lovely co-host Kendra. Hi. Hi. Um, wow, uh, episode 16. Already okay. 16 in. It seems uh, seems short-lived. It seems like we've just gotten going. We're just really getting started on the, the whole the podcast The wheels are moving thing. forward. First yes. time listening to us. Thanks for joining us. Uh, return listeners, double thank you for uh, coming back. Uh, catch us on all the major platforms, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, um, YouTube, Twitch, yeah, Twitch. Uh, we do a lot of visuals, so YouTube's kind of a good way to go. But uh, also, we try to we're we're working to make this more listener friendly. So I do keep the iTunes in mind. How you Absolutely. doing, iTunes? Stuff for the iTunes, and we got uh, really some special stuff for you coming up later in the show. Even a surprise to Kendra. Kendra, uh, before we get going on the show, uh, how you doing today? And catch us up on the week that you had. I People want to know. I had a, a meeting. I've been invited to join the group of women that own the college that I attended. So I've, I'm starting to, to wow. go. Wow. Rubbing elbows with the high and mighty. Well, I mean, it's it's just like a lot of ladies, a lot of ladies who value Is education. Is it all ladies? You, you, yeah. you attended a women's college. Is it it's all this? Um, yes. So really? this, this group, it's called PEO, and it was founded out of the idea that women should have a right to an education. Mm. Um, so a lot of the initiatives that they have is all about like providing educational opportunities for women and supporting women and, and just the lady power stuff. So oh. they own the college that I went to. Okay. So I'm scared to ask questions cause I don't know how deep you can go into seek. Uh, I don't know if it's a secret society, how deep you can go into the whole thing. Uh, so and I, I don't, don't even really know what it, either because ah, I'm not a part of the group yet. You're not in yet. Yeah. Don't ruin your chances by talking about it too much. Well, okay. Um, yeah, a lot to talk about with me because I got shows going on. Uh, yeah, yes, it's you do. fun. You know, it's like this is the fun time. Like the work was already previously, and now uh, the show is on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I'm not performing. I'm just directing. You know, I'm just waving my hand, and that's fun. Well, um, you're doing more than waving. I'm your like, hand. come in here, bam! I want you to come in here, bam! And that's what I like to do. Like that's why I like music directing. You can kind of pick and choose when they do the little musical hits. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of timing, a lot of jokes being told. So you want to they tell the joke. But eating, and then you got a cue when the music comes in, you know, just like your uh, normal sitcoms. Uh, but yeah, it's the fun time for me. It's like the super creative time. It's not mm -hmm. a lot of memorization. A lot of that's been done. So now we just get to really like just do the craft. Why? And you got to see the uh, different school in the area perform the exact same performance too, right? Uh, same show. I didn't see it. I mean, a lot of the kids that that were in the show saw it. I went and saw Little Shop of Horrors, but we're doing Charlie Brown. Mm -hmm. So when these kids went and saw this other school, this Christian school, kind of a private school, do mm -hmm. it with lots of money. Um, even though they have a really good time on stage and it's really a good job acting, it did light a fire underneath some of them or it gave them some good ideas about how to perform. I think when you go out and see something done and you're doing something like when I watch podcasts, I'm like, ooh, I like the way they do that. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I'll try to do it, but I'm usually not successful. But that's that's what's banging. You know that's what it is. It's banging on your craft. So you're you're definitely seeing the kids reach. Yeah, I, I tried. I've been pushing them all year. I'm not. I like. I'm like the guy who's like never says it's good enough. Like it's never. But it's, then in the end, I'm like, okay, you you, you worked hard. Exactly. Now just have fun, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's the way to do it. Because they're hard, having have fun. fun. They're talking. They're running around. I got to make sure they're on task. And we pumped this out in five and a half weeks. Yeah, you guys lost a whole week of school. Yeah. Five and a half weeks. It's a, it's amazing what we did. Let's get into the topic. Stop boring the people. All right. Well, no boringness here with the brick and mortar stores closing down. Right. We now we covered this earlier. Something about J.C. Penney uh, and uh, like Payless shoes. Right. Didn't we cover that like a few weeks ago? We did cover Payless closing down after this would be their second bankruptcy. Look, I got um, Elon in the and, background. And by so the way, now more stores are joining the ranks of Toys R Us and Pay Payless. Yeah. Gap, J.C. Penney, Victoria's Secret, Foot Locker, uh, 465 store closures in. 48 hours and we're getting this from fox business of course but uh brick and mortar is kind of going by the wayside uh let's cover them one by one gap uh 230 stores are going to close over two years okay um and they're going to separate from old navy now gap and old navy got ties when i was growing up i'm like oh they're like the same company gap used to be a great place for staple clothing i think uh -huh. that they just kind of missed the mark um i don't think they changed their styles quite enough Mm -hmm. uh, to keep up with with what is what's great, you know okay. what's going on, or or just have the normal stuff. A lot of times you see stuff that could be, I don't know. It used to be great staple clothing. I don't know what it is about fashion where they've kind of lost touch. Maybe it's the pricing. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's the quality of clothes. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So the gap's gonna separate from Old Navy. Old Navy is gonna be uh, publicly traded. Uh, J C Penney is closing eighteen department stores. So that is uh, seems like a small drop. They have uh, eight hundred fifty stores in total. 
and they're only closing 18, they say that more stores will close down the line. Now, JCPenney, if you don't know, has stopped selling major appliances, uh, furnitures at all of its stores. Usually you get some Maytag or something like that there. Or mm -hmm. there used to be JC-specific furniture stores. Those are gone now. Um, so and 850 store, 850 stores total, more closings down the line for JCPenney. 18 it, it's important to keep closings. in mind that JCPenney is frequently like what they'd call a corner store, store, cornerstone store. So if it's connected to like a mini mall or in a mall, um, that whole section of the business is likely going to take a whole hit if JCPenney leaves. Yeah, major. So this, this, this does have a large impact on some of those smaller outlet businesses that are usually connected or nearby something like a JCPenney. By the way, what are you drinking today? Uh, time Co to check in. Coffee. What what kind of coffee are you branding up here? Oh, this is the cheap stuff. I, well, I mean, it's what's it's called eight o'clock. Eight. It's called eight o'clock. It's the it's the most affordable whole bean coffee you can buy in the grocery there store. There you go. Getting some eight o'clock at two o'clock. Thank uh -huh. you very much. Uh, one of those final stores that we were talking about, Victoria's Secret, uh, closing fifty three stores this year. We never think we'd see the day. I remember growing up, and uh, you know, maybe I had a girlfriend and going in there. And, and hearing about the quality of the product, like, oh, uh -huh. the bras are very good. They stay together. They're higher quality bra than what I can get usually. I guess now it's kind of not the case. A lot of stuff is glued on. A lot of people are, like, unsatisfied with what they're getting, specifically at Victoria's mm -hmm. Secret, uh, compared to what they did get maybe back in the 90s, early 2000s. Yeah. Well, what Victoria's Secret did and what uh, I, I recently watched a documentary about this, mm -hmm. and Ooh. they were talking about how Victoria's Secret did, I think it, it was like the, the shape wear bra. There was a specific type of bra that like all women, I remember purchasing one, to be quite honest. Oh, okay. What's it um, called? I, the shapewear? It, well, I want to say it was like the t-shirt bra or so, like it had some kind of name, but it was, you know, fully supported and it was also prettier. And that was the, the big deal because, you know, they didn't always have these pretty bras and that's Victoria's what Victoria's Secret, Secret well, before okay. Victoria's Secret oh, okay. is what I'm saying. Oh. There were businesses that were selling those types of bras, and True that's that. where they, they kind of cornerstone the market in that. Now, yeah, they're waiting like once a year in the J.C. Penney section around Valentine's Day to get anything exactly. saucy, you know? Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Sears and Roebuck. So Victoria's Secret kind of uh, did that, and then they came out with their really great bra that was supportive that women loved because it was comfortable and they say that victoria missed the mark because they didn't jump on the athleisure bandwagon that's why they're saying that victoria's secret is failing because instead of embracing the yoga pants and they the did t-shirts they did not too late ah. they were too late they were behind the curve that mm -hmm. was after lululemon and arrow and all these other brands had already embraced it even the multi-level marketing company went through and grabbed a bunch of bucks from those what was that exactly. the Lul lululemon and no the uh, oh, the Lululemons is a good one. It is. We don't right. down talk Lululemon um, no, with their ninety dollars the, workout pants. There were some tights. There were like these, like some sort of Lulu tights. Oh my god! Why can't we remember this? Because it was multi-level marketing. That's Can why. Can you look it up? With the pants, uh, just I look can. up real quick. While I continue to uh, talk um, a little bit about, go ahead. Well, gonna... the, the last thing that I wanted to All right. say I'll look it up. is that uh, <laughs> I'll look it up. they also uh, dropped their, uh, Victoria's Secret dropped their bathing suit line a couple of years ago, and they feel like that had a negative impact because they were trying to figure out how to best address the fact that Victoria's Secret was, lose, was losing stock. LuLaRoe. LuLaRoe. Thank you. Go. you. All right. Um, but anyway, so they said that they're actually bringing back the bathing suit line in an attempt to... Um, bolster victoria's secret sales so we'll see how that bathing suit line coming out this year will do it's all about going um online nowadays and the king of online is amazon so in a weird case of role reversal amina amazon is now reportedly opening up grocery stores they're oh, now they already bought whole foods and this is coming from uh, the guardian.com they already bought whole foods at 13.7 billion dollars in 2017 so they got into the food market there walmart is the biggest distributor of our groceries right now uh big box chains but amazon getting into the mix and i just thought that was freaking crazy because we got so many brick and mortars shutting down meanwhile amazon which is huge online setting up more brick and mortars hmm a little, little craziness the, going on, huh? The ebb and flow of life, right? Mm -hmm. The wax and the wane. Think business comes in, business goes out. Wal and Walmart does the grocery uh, pickup now. Now you have shipped shopping, which is local, which is like a Meyer brand store, if you know what the Meyer groceries, if you're in Michigan. 
Um, you know, and you did a little bit of that. You have experience doing that. Yeah, so that's a grocery service. It's via an app. And you can, it's more than just Meyer. It's also Target and a few other. I mean, they're really kind of a national. If um, you go to the grocery store on the weekend, you will see shipped shoppers with their shirt on walking around. I bright mean, we, green. The yeah. old one. The it's old got model. like a UFO on it. Yeah, it's got a little I alien don't even understand shape. That. Why UFO? Well, because I think it's you're shifting your your. And how much does it cost for a normal uh, gro- Is it a percentage of the groceries? I mean, you were. It was it. a percentage, if I'm remembering correctly. I mean, and then plus a tip. If you could. T- it was polite for you to tip. They're it's not polite making tip, right? that much money. But but mm. yeah, it was it was a percentage of the sale. Well, Walmart has the grocery pickup service at 3,100 stores by next January. I don't know why this is. Uh, I don't. I, mean, I guess I'm just not used to it. I've never done it. Um, I kind of like picking out my own groceries. It's kind of is an experience for me. I bet somebody who doesn't have a lot of time would love to just like, hey, just do that. Um, I, it was definitely something that I saw. Most of the people I was delivering groceries to, they all had small kids. And I, I noticed all the small kids were like running to the door and ready. So it really felt to me like an emergency. Like they were like, oh, we need groceries. Let's go ahead and do this. And oh, let's just go ahead and get all the groceries from this shipped person. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so because you don't want to drag around your toddler to a shipped thing i also personally like to pick out my groceries but i do imagine for a lot of people it just fits into their life better to have your groceries delivered i guess so. busy busy people first amazon grocery store will be opening in los angeles before the end of the year uh then san francisco seattle chicago washington dc philadelphia and that's the latest report on amazon jeff bezos fresh off the divorce and now he wants to go shopping for groceries. Just do the normal stuff. And just expand in his business like Be- Bezos would. Yeah, you would think so. Uh, is it on Ask Reddit now? It is on Ask we're Reddit. We're asking Reddit. Okay, since we're in the grocery store right now, uh, my brother loves a segment where we, where we go to the Reddits and read the posts. Um, I don't want to just be a uh, news agency that reads people's posts, but it's good to do a litmus test of uh, the demographics here. What do you think about se- self-checkouts? gradually increasing now this started as a novelty you would go oh hey you know boom scan them through but now it seems to be uh, more and more checkout lines are self-checkout yes i feelings approve. and thoughts i i love i love the i mean yes we are reducing the amount of human workers that are able to check people out but as somebody who worked in a grocery store for 25 years um just let me check my own stuff out i mean i would i feel like i would go faster i would be happier i would yeah. organize my bags the way that i would like them to yeah somebody else wouldn't be touching all my groceries yeah so i am heavily in favor of a self self Check yeah, you, you bring the own bags too. You got like three huge bags and everything just kind of gets put instead of using like 20 plastic bags, like the three bags and you're done. Exactly. And I love that. I didn't know reusables could be giant. They, they can be giant and very useful. I don't know. I've worked checkouts. I feel like I'm just as fast as the person behind the checkout stand. So I'm like, let me just do it. Exactly. Some other people might not be that way. You mm-hmm. know, some people are going to need help. So there always will kind of be a need for a person there. And there always should be a couple. But doesn't that tell you how easy the job is? If like you can just give it to the cut. Nah, you just go ahead and do it. You well, know what I'm saying? How easy is the job? You just give it to the customer and well, they do it for you. I would say that a lot of people, in, especially thinking. our generation, we've been trained to do a lot of this stuff on our, you know, it's not like you could take the leap of going into a grocery store and handing your grocery list to the grocer right. and just jump right to give, se- ch- checking yourself out at a right. self-checkout. You know, it. we were trained into this and, and I think it... it you I, don't know if, I, don't know if, I don't necessarily know if that's true. I just think it's easy enough that we can do it. I don't think necessarily you, you worked in a store. I don't necessarily think the masses were trained into this. I think it's a relatively easy thing to pick it up and scan. I think that's the way it was. Just like when Ray Kroc or the McDonald's owners turned the soda fountains around and just had you fill up your own soda. Mm-hmm. Well, that saves time on the employee. Mm-hmm. They don't have to pay the employee to fill up sodas anymore. The customer's doing it. Mm-hmm. So this is easy. Um, but you're for it. Uh, 100%. Yeah. 100%. 120 billion percent. Yeah. Um. You know, I don't know. Like, it's bad when you, like, don't put it necessarily in the bagging area and then they're like, beep, beep, please put item in bagging area. Or that if you set something down too early, it's like unexpected item. And, and then you feel like a schlep and, you know, the person comes over, has got a, like, yeah, I don't know. I was just resting my knee on the, I didn't know the whole thing was a scale. I was just putting my knee up on it one time. Yeah. They got to, they got to make sure that you're not stealing anything, putting extra items in the, the bagging areas and stuff like that. They do say that 
that you can kind of like, if it's not registering the weight, you can kind of like lean on it a little bit when you put a light item in and that kind of lets the scale know like something has been put in. Um, it's just super light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I, I, and I, that's another thing. It's so light sometimes you never, yeah, it doesn't register. Yeah. So anyway, you're for it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with it. 20 well, item checkout. Like sometimes I see people see like doing too many items. Uh, that kind of irks me. I like people to follow the rules. I'm always like counting. If it's 25 or under 30 under, I'm fine. But like, if yeah. it's like a lot, I'm like, eh. But um, yeah, I don't well, know. And Automation. I, as as there's more self checkouts, I, I mean, when it's busy and there's no self checkouts, it's one of those things where be respectful. If you've only got twenty items, then go into the self checkout or the twenty items or yeah, less. Be respectful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would say that they save time. I like it when there's long lines for the checkout and the self checkout. There's no lines. Exactly. I do like that. Like the option to go faster. Yeah. So I like that. Mm -hmm. That's what I want. And you know what else people like? What shroud. They I do? put this guy up, and um, some people who listen to the show uh, don't know who this guy is, Shroud. Like, who's this Shroud guy? He's the Michael Jordan of video games, basically. He used to be pro, now he just Twitch streams for fun, but he's still a god in a lot of people's eyes. The god of video games, right? He is. And what happens when you have a god or people idolizing someone else? They get a little starstruck. Mm -hmm. A little, a little, fa a little thing, fan girly. And the thing about video games is, yeah, it's a slim chance, but there could be a chance that you suit up with Michael Jordan. Imagine that. Not only do you watch Michael Jordan, there could be a chance that you get into a game with Michael Jordan. Wouldn't that be crazy? It's magical. That's what video. And here we're going to bring you this magic moment. Two kids, they call it nutting over shroud, but you know you can hear the excitement uh... in their voice. In their voice here, quite loud for you. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> uh, Trout? Yeah, Trout, how's it going? Um, holy shit, dude. Oh my god. It's <laughs> full screen it. Can't full screen it. Can you guys, hey, can you guys hear me? Hello? Oh my god, what's up, Shroud? Oh, hey. How's it going? Oh my. Yeah. Shroud! <laughs> Shroud! <laughs> no. What? Oh no. No. Listen. Focus up, okay? We need to get a W here, okay? Uh, okay I got you, I got you. I'm fucking shaking, bro. I got you, I got you. Got you. Got you. Uh, there's something about emotion and, and uh, unbridled emotion oh that I love. Oh, these guys, these kids, man. How's it going? Oh my, Shroud, <laughs> Shroud. Shroud, Shroud. Uh, I love it, man. Huge I don't know. Fans that, hits a funny, that hits a funny place with me, you know? I just like to see... Um, people so happy that like they can't. <laughs> wow, <laughs> gee whiz, shroud. Wow, <laughs> oh man, raw enthusiasm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the magic of uh, Apex Legends. <sighs> you know, I've been practicing. Have you? Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll unleash some of my gameplay on the stream sooner or later. Uh, but Twitch.tv forward slash Truce Now. Truce Now. You can check the show live every Saturday at two, or catch us via the YouTube network, iTunes, and or. Spotify, shoot the messenger, kapow. Now, <laughs> it's time to get bad. 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 It's Kendra's bad movie review. Yay! Yes! Can we clap? We, okay. we can! I mean, we used to, you know, the intro's coming. Um, We gotta build some way, but a bad movie every single week, and I think we gotta change the title now because... This, is... this week's um, movie suggestion, not necessarily a bad movie, right? The, no, this is an award-winning, multiple award-winning, winning, multiple times of best sci-fi, best black comedy list. It's, it appears on all the Ooh, lists, guys. Does it really? It okay, does. exciting. And, and if you've read the title, you already know, but um, unveiling it, what, what are we watching today? Dr. Strangelove or... How I learned to stop worrying and love the bomb. How I stop wor learn learn to stop worrying and love the bomb. That is a giant title. Yes, it is. Okay, Stanley Kubrick, right? Familiar him, uh, Space Odyssey, two thousand one, things like that. He he is the god of cinema. One was this of, his one first of them. one, or it was an early film. Okay. This was he was tired with the uh, American um, studios, if I'm remembering the story correctly. So he went over to Europe to create Lolita, and then he created this movie, Doctor Strange Love, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. This mm. is a black comedy that makes a satire out of the Cold War a nuclear threat if you didn't get that from the title learning to love the bomb um and it's actually loosely based on peter george's thriller novel red alert they were originally just going to do a screen adaptation and then they found that 
adding the funny stuff, adding this comedy element actually just made it much more just better. Yeah. So they kind of deviated yeah. from the script. Um, now, because this is Kubrick, Kubrick knows how to set a picture. Does he? I, I mean, he, even early on, eh? Uh, or oh, always. Yeah. I, what I love about him is his use of signs and these kind of subliminal messaging. You can see in the background a lot of the times when this tension is building of uh, peace is our profession. It, you see on the military bases everywhere. Uh, yes. And then there's also another moment where that guy on the screen you saw, um, he was holding a book and he's covering up the front of the book very strategically. And it says attack book. It actually says something else, but uh, the way that the scene is set up. Attack book. It's, it's He's got his attack book. book. Exactly. Um, so I have to shout out uh, Sir Ken Adam and his beautiful set design of the war room. That uh, classic look of the poker table type look of the circle table and the big screens with the maps on them. That came from the brain of Sir Ken Adams and actually inspired real life war rooms after that film was made. I guess um, when Ronald Reagan oh, really? got to the White House, he asked to see the war room and, you know, that Kubrick must have filmed here. <laughs> so, so very, right, well, very. Let me, uh, let me take a look at that war room while, while we're on it. I mean, some of the lighting and stuff. Who did this, you say? Uh, Ken Adam. He He's famous for his set design. Yeah, he I did... thought he did some of the uh, Bond villain layers and stuff like that. He did. He okay, did, as a matter of fact. You can see it in the background. You see that ring there? That's part of the uh, the, the major war room there. The very poker table feel of it with the round table and, and the lighting elements. Um, this is crazy cuts on this. Uh... The t trailer yeah. is very odd until about halfway through because it asks all these questions. Um, and then it okay, this starts is the war to room you... here, right? Yes. Okay, okay, very cool. And that's the president speaking, played by Peter Sellers. Peter Sellers. He played Peter Sellers played three characters in this film: the president. Uh, he also played group captain Lionel Mandrake and Doctor Strange Love, the character that this movie is named after. Good. Um. Well, let's listen to a little clip. I don't want to get copyright strike up up and down this, but uh. Let's play a little bit. Here. Impression that I was the only one in authority to order the use of nuclear weapons. Uh, that's right, sir. You are the only person authorized to do so. And although I uh, hate to judge before all the facts are in, it's beginning to look like uh, General Ripper exceeded his authority. I, I... There you go. Wow. So, that guy's always with his gum. Great characters in this, I gotta say. Very vivid characterization. The actors in this all play very strong roles. Yeah. And they, they figured out aspects of their character and just highlighted those throughout. I mean, it seems like the script very lent itself to these very diverse characters with the the um, French colonel, the, the former Nazi scientist, the uh, Russian chaplain, uh, the... So it had a lot of variety of characters. And then there was all these military men and you got to see the way that they handled their military positions and, and how it kind of, their military positions actually impacted their mental health, to be quite honest. Wow. Um, yeah. True. Um, so of course this was playing on the, 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 the red threat. Uh, the, the synopsis of the movie is basically that one of the military generals um, goes a little kooky and decides to uh, shoot, use nuclear weapons against russia and so everybody's just trying to prevent that from occurring the entire time uh they're trying to prevent the nuclear blast very good um so also i would say that the script is is very fu funny quick very dark um it's i don't mind the black and white film at all it adds a real artistic element and and gives a real feel for the time period in my opinion mm -hmm. um the music in the background was beautiful between the um this kind of soldiering war march when they were in the plane and then also um i didn't notice it as much in the beginning but the ending sequences there were some you got the ending sequences included some explosions. Okay. And there was this beautiful um, song that was playing in the background that kind of was very ironic that. Um, we'll meet again. Don't know where. Don't know when. That's the one. So mm -hmm. it, it, he just has Kubrick has a way of juxtaposing things, making things the, the small moments in life really kind of funny in this film. Uh, my favorite moments were the conversations between the president and the Russian chaplain. Uh, yeah. uh, that, that was beautiful. The beautiful, awkward relationship of political power. Mm -hmm. 
So I am ready to give my final score. Oh, okay, well I watched it with you, man, and I was uh I was pretty impressed with this one. We had three Starship Trooper rating last time. Let me go ahead and remove the Starship Troopers from the poll, Kendra. Doctor Strange Love, do we have a score of uh Johnny Rico? Do we have at least one star? Bring Johnny Rico out. Yes, we have a Johnny Rico Starship Trooper for our first score. Stanley Kubrick launching his career. In Doctor Strange Love, How I Learned to Love the Bomb and Not Be Fearful for other reasons. <laughs> Close. On a Go big, ahead and big bring title. <laughs> two, two stars? Two stars. Yay. Dizzy Flores. Dizzy Flores. Okay, and I'm getting to know these characters quite well. Carbon Ibanez on a Starship rating, Starship Trooper rating out of five. Do we have at least three Starship Troopers? Carbon Ibanez. Yes. Bring Carmen on out. Carbon yeah. Ibanez. There she is. She, she's out. Oh, she's in. Now she's out. Out and about. Um, wow. Dangerous territories, but a movie such as this is truly worthy of a fourth star. Do we have a four star general in the house? Yes! <laughs> Carl Jenkins! <laughs> there we go. A little new pet. That's Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> was the, I, well, yeah, that was the joke. <laughs> Leroy! Jenkins, Neil Patrick Harris has now joined the crew. We have four Starship Troopers. This is the biggest rating we've ever had so far. The moment of truth is upon us. What year did the movie come out? 1968? 1964. The 1964 classic Dr. Strangelove. Is it worthy of a five-star rating? First ever five-star rating, Kendra. Yes, yes, it is worthy what? of a five star it's Busey. rating. It's Busey. Jake Busey. Jake Busey. Character <laughs> name Ace Levy, but Jake Busey. Ace Levy is his name. Yes. Oh, we have all five star five starship troopers with Jake Busey. Ding 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 ding. Good. So why five stars, Kendra? Let's go over. Just wrap it up real quick. Um, he makes it look easy. To, to put it simply, Kubrick does film so well that he makes it look like anybody can just write a script and set a beautiful picture. He puts so many levels into his artistry and, and the detail. He makes it look easy, friends. Yep. He does. Look at that. Look at that set. Look at that. Look at the war room. It's beautiful. iconic. Working with the right people is important. You know, they can make you look good. An editor... Make or, can make or break you, too. Um, so, yeah, choosing the right people to work with. Serendipitous moment. He gets to make good movies. They approve of his vision. And we didn't even get into the conspiracy theories yet. So that I'll save that for another show. But a five-star rating out of five. Go see it. Watch the movie. Yeah, there's reasons if you why it won it. so many awards. Yeah, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. I guess, um, well, I think this kind of changes bad movie review. I think... I think we have to um, evolve it some way. I think, like, not just bad movies, but maybe movies of note that maybe we should watch and then see if they hold up to the test of time. I'm, a, I'm in we favor of that. We can still call it bad movie review because, fuck them, who cares? Like, exactly. We can call it anything we want to. We can call it mom's yard sale. I don't give a <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's going to work for us. <laughs> Um, and I love it. So great movie review there, Kendra. Thank Very you. Nice. Thank, Very thank nice. you. Thank you for the suggestions. Uh, uh, keep giving us movie suggestions because this one was so good. I would love to have like the worst film we've ever had. So uh, shoot your suggestions wow, to us. Wow, you really want to watch a bad film? Do you really want to spend time on a bad? Yes, you do. Yeah. Probably. Okay. Yeah, right. I do. Right. Who am I talking to? <laughs> uh, um, all right. So uh, we're on world record breaking dog. That's right. Now you've ever thrown a ball to your dog. Um, my problem with throwing a ball to the dog is that they never come back with it, right? <laughs> no. They'll grab it, but they'll just leave it there. But this dog here, um, this was at a, looks to be uh, some sort of football game uh, indoor. Here we go. I think it was in Canada, the CFL. And the guy chucks it, and uh, the dog goes about 78 yards there. 70, ooh, boom. Yeah, about 78 yards there. Um, said to be the world record, right? 78 yards. How many feet is that? It's like uh, 300 feet, right? 178 yards. It's like 150 feet. Uh, 83 yards is what they're saying. 83 yards to feet comparison. Can we do the quick mass? Uh, yeah, that's what I was going to do. Yards to feet. I could just do, okay, so 83 yards. 83 yards is 249 feet. And they're like, okay, world record broken. Wrong. Because I just want to correct this. In 2015, the actual world record was set by a whippet. 
A whip it? A whip it. 400 feet. And the speed of the throw was at 400 miles an hour. 402 feet. We got it for you right here. Let me kick that. Let me, oh, shh. Let me kick the full screen for you. I'm sorry about that. You were watching my face for quite some time here. Um, there we go. Full screen it. Bam. The dog going and catching. There it is. And that was the world record. Innova was there. They make disc golf discs. Uh -huh. It's not like your ultimate frisbee, man. The disc golf discs, they go so much further. 402 feet isn't even that big of a throw for disc golf throwers. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's kind of big. It's huge. So basically, this dog world record catching thing is only set by the basis of how far we can throw the disc, <laughs> Exactly. Right? I can't throw a frisbee that far. Mm -hmm. This really says more about the talent of the thrower than the dog. Yes. Because all the dog has to do is get underneath. Davy the Whippet. Now, this was uh, done in America. I know this is the UK reporting, but Davy the uh, Whippet has since retired. He's got a great retirement video. It's kind of sad, but you know, all dogs go to heaven. And that's better than what I can say for me. So, <laughs> oh. I'm just kidding. I got high hopes. I'm just saying, <laughs> all dogs go to heaven. That's a hundred percent. That's a hundred percent possibility yeah, you right are a there. Dog, so you'd you be know? fine. Like I don't know. I might be fine. I might not be fine. Let's uh, continue on with the show. We still have a few more things to get through this week. Um, of course, with the 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 schedule right now, the show is going to be a little thin. But whatever, you know, we're still having fun. Um, should we go to this week in Reddit? Yeah, why not? What do you hate about your hometown? This week's Reddit question: What is it that you hate most about your city or town that you live in? Hmm. Okay, you think about your hometown now. When you say hometown, do you consider that countryside your hometown or like the biggest adjacent city? Because you could do different things with it, right? You know, those people who lay in a suburb could also do the same thing. You're outside L.A. Well, do you do you holler at L.A. Mm -hmm. or do you holler at your actual city mm -hmm. of Hawthorne? Yeah. You know, or whatever, you know. Yeah, I do. I, I mean, I would say that I do have two hometowns and there are both things to hate about either of them. OK. Um, mm. the, the, the hometown that I grew up in, like from a small child, that was not a town. I mean, it was a stop sign in my parents' business. There was I couldn't go anywhere. I didn't there was no children around. So like, is that what you hated? The yeah, desolate nature of... Uh... Yeah, I mean, when you're a little kid growing up, like, you hear stories about, like, going outside and playing with your neighbor kids. Like, there were no neighbor kids. That's what I seek for in my hometown now. I just see no neighbor kids and uh, <laughs> just some serenity, you know? Like my, grand, like, my dad says my grandparents had it right. They had a garden. They just walked down. He walked to the mail. He played cribbage with the boys. It was fine. The guy says, um, I live... I live near Six Flags in an outlet mall. The town's nothing but retail chains and restaurants. There's no downtown area outside of all that. You do need a sense of community when you live in a town. Yeah. Um, I find the biggest uh, biggest negative against our small, my small town that I grew up in is the fact that it's hard to make good money there. It's hard to make, um, especially doing entertainment or anything that we like to do, right? Yeah, yeah, Then go exactly. to the bigger cities where there's a lot more people around that can go out and see shows and things like that. Um, you know, they just did a fantastic show out at the college. We went there. Well, it was, you know, quarter full. People just aren't driving out to see to see shows. You need more people and more of a culture it takes and, a lot of population in order to make an entertainment yeah. culture sustainable and 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 or make they it... gotta be rabid fans you know you gotta have a bunch of stage moms and like you know how some of those yeah. cultures go around schools and stuff like that like you, you need one of those um yeah uh some people say they hate salt effing everywhere <laughs> salt is everywhere in the midwest it's on the you know it eats cars and they still continue to use it on the roads and the sand that we use on the roads and it's just kind of dirty you know, a lot dirtier than it should be, really. It, it's it's nasty. Mm -hmm. in, in the wintertime, the salt is unpleasant, but I prefer the salt to the ice. So. This comment says, hello, I'm road salt. I help you drive around safely, but also destroy your car in the process. Thanks. <laughs> it does. A rust out car is way worse. These L.A. cars last for 30, 40 years longer than they would in the in Michigan. That's I what I understand. They, I hear they even make them different. Like they treat the cars in the north for salt and they don't treat the cars in the south for salt before they sell them. I hear it's different. That makes sense. I don't know. I hear it's different. I, I can, would not be surprised. Don't shoot the messenger. Um, St. Petersburg, Russia weather. They say uh, 6 million city at the latitude of Anchorage, Alaska. Shitty, dirty snow everywhere from early November to late March or even April. I think a lot of northern um, state cities can can attest to it, can abide to it. Indeed, indeed. indeed. Any uh, other ones that you uh, uh, well, felt uh, tickled your fancy? Continuing in the weather, uh, yeah. semi-rural Australia, too hot to leave the house for three to six months of the years and you pray like hell there's no power outages and your air conditioner doesn't burn out you look out your window and only see death and despair a where was that in dust australia bowl. 
just uh, going off their hottest year on record, too. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, they're going through a terrible summer down there. Uh, this guy says, we have a street spelt Cockburn. That's C-O-C-K-B-U-R-N. But everyone pronounces it Coburn. Stop living this lie and pronounce it Cockburn. That's what they say. <laughs> Stop living a lie. It is not Coburn. Um, you know, words are powerful. Uh, they say, L.A., I work downtown and it gets very annoying when influencers and or people who just move in get upset when you're in their way. I'm sorry I ruined your photo. I just want to get home. It's true. A lot of uh, people, everybody trying to make it out in L.A. one mm -hmm. way or another. Mm -hmm. You know, there's yeah. such an air of self-importance. I understand, like, everybody basically has a headshot out there. You know, you need... Has a what? Headshot? Yeah, yeah. I know. And one, one way or another. There's a lot of people that don't, let's just say. But you run into a lot of people that do. Mm -hmm. You know? And they, they all work in restaurants. Uh, one commenter says... I live in a fairly small town and I love it, but I miss options. Uh, I'd like to go out to dinner past 7 p.m. Everything just closes up come five o'clock. Yeah, that's a small town uh, problem. Yeah, I, would say, I mean, no. if you're working nine to five and you want to go check out your downtown and go to the locally grocery, the local shops and support your local community, it's really hard to do that because mm -hmm. they're closing at five. Sometimes, sometimes not. But even when they close at nine, no one shows up. So I don't blame them exactly. either. Exactly. You know, right? You can't just pay somebody for four hours. Um, the water. Somebody says, okay. Now, if you've ever lived in the country or lived in great services, we live by fresh water here. The water's very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, but even then, you don't run tests on it. I don't check to see the chlorine levels and the fluoride levels, and I don't know what they're putting in the water. God damn it! It's making the frogs gay. Um, <laughs> 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 but uh in the city in la that's a that's a reference if you don't get it look it up make the frogs gay um in the city yeah of course it's a lot a lot testier you know it's, it doesn't yeah. feel like it's uh it's clean mm -hmm. nor does it sometimes smell as nice even sometimes well water if you're in the country too far in the country it'll smell like well water smell like rotten eggs and you get that going on that's too. a that's a sour well it, that's that's a bad it, well you probably shouldn't be drinking out of that if it well, smells like they don't eggs. drink it you know it's for showering and okay. stuff like that but I've, I've definitely you know you ever go to a campsite uh in the forest a lot of these campuses they have the this high sulfur in the water or whatever and you can hey, smell it the water at Cadi was so bad we had a song about it what what was the song Give me some words. Give me some lyrics. <laughs> Nevada water makes you cower when you go to take a shower. Something, 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 something. Have it your way. I can't remember the rest <laughs> of the lyrics. That's pretty good. I'll remember them after Founders at the end of this month. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Go back and get some of those lyrics and bring I'll, them back I'll, to us. We'd I'll, love I'll to hear them. more about Cotty College. <laughs> I have a meme about she that, loves actually. The, she, actually, you've been very good. When Kendra and I first started doing uh, shows... It was all the time Cotty College, but she's since um, regressed. Because you know more now. I need uh, to inform you. No, you know more. Right? You, you become, <laughs> you've, you've got more things to pull from other than just your college. Incorrect. Like, potholes. <laughs> yes, you're much more of a fruitful person <laughs> nowadays. Like, you're fruitful. Potholes. Road work that takes forever. Even here in beautiful TC, um, with the winter months and plows going over those roads, um, and then, you know, water getting to the soil, then the water melting and it erodes the sand and then it sinks, creating sinkholes and potholes. There you have mm -hmm. it. Um, yeah, the, yeah. The work is never done in a northern city. It's not correct. As soon as you think it is, everything thaws and it Sometimes I think over. it's like a conspiracy theory for the tire companies and the auto companies to put wear and tear in your car and make you like, you know, it seems like that sometimes. But they'd have to really be digging some potholes. Didn't some city like plant like trees in the potholes or whatever to make them fill up faster? Well, we didn't. My dad told a story to us uh, two weeks ago about how one of the roads that I grew up in were so bad. Yeah. It was so muddy one year back in the 90s that somebody in the middle of the winter took their Christmas tree and they stuck it in the middle of the road. Like they didn't need anything. They just took the mud that was there and they just stuck the tree right in the middle of the road. I like it. Because people kept driving through the, the mud and they would get stuck. So when they put the tree in, in the, everybody drove everybody around the tree. Driving there around you go. Just plant a tree, got stuck. man. <laughs> Best time to plant a trees right now. Um, this person says the worst thing about their hometown, murder. Oh. Definitely the murder. They live in Baltimore. Oh, okay. Also, I was going to say drugs. Detroit. Also drugs. We're going to wrap that one up right there with the murder clause. Um, so As always. Mo moving on. We cover Elon Musk every single week and every single week. He delivers. Look at the background today. Delivering on Joe Rogan podcast. Beautiful. You take a quarter of a puff one time and you get labeled a pothead. The guy didn't even smoke it right. But anyway, <laughs> I'm not a judge nor an expert. I just know like, hey, I've been around some friends. Um, 
So <laughs> Elon Musk, several different, uh, what's the first topic here, Kendra? Help me out. Well, there was a bit of hot water with the autopilot. Uh, there was a, a crash with a trailer. Yeah, yeah, the autopilot. Uh, this is the third accident with Tesla Model 3. The driver dies in a crash with the trailer. They're not ruling out autopilot, but this is why you still got to like maintain control. But think about that. So the trailer is above and you kind of drive underneath it. The trailer's so high that it doesn't register with the car. And it did this before in the, the, uh, the previous one where the guy died underneath, completely underneath it, T-boned underneath. Mm -hmm. Nice truck went through and boom. It just sheared right up, the top right And off. then the car kept driving. Yeah. For yeah. 500 yards. Yeah. So, you know. It, it, autonomous keeps going which is the scary thing about automation man you just miss boom the thing's gonna keep going it just keeps going like normal like whoa 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 stop exactly doesn't know to stop no it doesn't so that's gotta be um this is gonna be analyzed they're gonna go through it uh 45 year old joshua brown uh got in may of 2016 yeah 45 year old that's when he died that was back then uh, in this case, it's a one vehicle a tractor trailer and a two vehicle um, and two vehicles, the Model Three. So just a tractor trailer and the Model Three uh, ran into each other. So autopilot, it's gonna like that's why some of these things you don't want to be early adopters of. Exactly, you want them to get the, all the kinks out before you start. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And and Tesla did say that they're gonna be uh, working with the police force in order to to help figure out what happened. I would, you know, anything autopilot, you got to be on guard, right? You gotta you gotta still keep your guard up. It's not just I'm sure some people put that bitch on and fall asleep. Yeah. I'm sure they do. Uh -huh. I'm sure this is an anomaly. Um, but uh, it, it is unfortunate for Elon Musk. Also, bad news for Elon Musk and the SEC. Is that right? What he doesn't respect. Um, he does not respect the SEC. And they're going to court right now. Let me see. The SEC cracked down. I didn't post a link. Nope. But they're cracking down this week. Let's just say that. They're cracking down this week. He's got a hearing. They want to hold him in contempt of court because... Oh. Um, he didn't follow the orders to have his tweets monitored, right? Yes. Oh. Yeah, yeah. He's still at war with the SEC. Let me see. I, I think I have something right here. Um, yes. Heats up. Historic. It's a launch week for SpaceX. SEC found that Musk had not sought, sought out approval from Tesla's communications team for tweets, a provision that had been established in a 2018 settlement, right? Uh, he said, quote, Tesla made zero cars in 2011, but will make around 500K in 2019. That's what he tweeted, and that's what he's getting in trouble with. Oh. Because he's not uh, allowed he meant to, to tweet say about the business, right? He's meant to say the annualized production rate at the end of 2019 will probably be around 500K, i.e. 10,000 uh, 10, cars a week. So deliveries for the year are still estimated to be about 400,000. Mm -hmm. So he kind of overshot, and they're like, hey, you're saying things that are lies. Uh, and you you got to be careful. So the SEC is is doing that business. He doesn't respect them. He doesn't really agree agree with them. I think he's just super hype, and he has high aspirations, right? I think that yeah, he just tends to be overly optimistic. I don't need to and... stick up for Elon, no, right? No, but uh, but there it is. But go ahead. Well, yeah, they tends to be overly optimistic, and people are harsh on him because they're intimidated by the revolution. Okay, the so revolution. Let's, let's talk about the launches um in a little bit. But right now, the uh, the Roadster that he sent in space, the hundred thousand, you know, dollar Model S with the really cool picture that oh, everybody man. can see. Yeah, when a star man. Well, um, it's traveled farther than any car in history now. Boom! So there you go. <laughs> so it's just sent out like thirty two. I don't know. It's going fast. Uh, it is. Uh, it's it's enough to travel every single road in the world twenty two times. So you can imagine it's probably yeah. It's far. It's past, going. It's far traveled far past any other one. Um, and I think the orbit overshot, they overshot Mars. So it's like set to like come back and hit the sun or something like that. Uh, but yeah, I wasn't too worried about that. We'll cover that as it, as it shows up, but there you go. It's traveled more than any other car. So that's kind of good. Tesla, which we covered before, hits the $35,000 mark, right? After all the layoffs, he's got the, he's got the, the Tesla model three. At thirty-five thousand dollars. Okay, so he cut, he cut, trimmed up. Okay, we got to do some layoffs here, some layoffs here. But guess what? SEC, we've got the Tesla Model Three down to thirty-five thousand dollars, like we promised. So that was the goal. Um, and they're still, they do everything online. You know, you, you were asking if they're going to open up a Tesla store here. Well, they don't, they don't do a lot of that. It's all online website. Well, and apparently a lot of the cuts were that they they decided to keep uh, 
they said that executives decided to keep into turn retail into galleries or showrooms mm. laying off sales essentially so they're right. saying like you can still look at the vehicles in person okay but we don't have staff on hand anymore to sell you those vehicles you need to go online to purchase them yes. which is different than any other um business car business right now i like it i like it i mean i think that's the way to buy that's the future of buying cars you definitely want to see them sit in them um, it's like ordering a pizza, man. You got all these little different options, but each one bumps the price up, right? Exactly. You know, you want some wood grain paneling, boom, bumping the price up. You want that yeah, big sunroof with the solar panels, boom, 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 going to bump the price up yeah. a little bit. So uh, it's really cool. Uh, go to their website. It's just kind of neat to look at. You feel like you're in a different type of car buying experience. And of course, there are other companies on the way to a $35,000 mark to compete with Tesla. But uh, it's all about SpaceX today, especially today. Um, now they did a test flight. They launched their first, um, um, capsule, which will hold human beings for trips to the space station. And then of course the moon, and then of course Mars. So, uh, they did the first big test and it was a big test for NASA and SpaceX working together since it's going to go to the space station. Uh, it's going to take about, I think, uh, seven to 14 days for this to dock with the space station, but it took off today. Um, this so, is 17 years in the making. Uh, it took them 17 years to get to this point. Well, from the space shuttle shutting down mm -hmm. and bringing astronauts up, mm -hmm. we had no way to shuttle astronauts. They exactly. shut the space shuttle down. So this is actually picking up where they left off. So uh, really, really great stuff. Uh, fantastic launches going down uh, today in the Dragon rockets as they land straight up. They did as they did, you know, which was great. Mm -hmm. I thought it was really good. So that happened today, huh? It was it was kind of cool to listen to them talk about the experience and, and everything. So I would encourage you guys to go out and check out the news conference and listen to some of the them talk about uh, the experience and all the work that was put into this. Um, yeah, no, I got, I got uh, actually recorded the launch earlier, so I'll play a little bit, bit of that as we end the show. But real quick, one more Elon Musk story. Switching up his legal team, he hired the lawyer who went after Enron to defend him against the SEC. So oh, he's got the guy nice. who went after <laughs> Enron. He chooses the right people. Yeah. Man. I watched the post interview with Elon and he just says, Hey man, I want to be a spacefaring civilization. I think that's, that excites me to live and want to do more. And I want the things in, he said today, I want the things in science fiction to come true. That's the kind of life I want. I want to not just have science fiction, always be science fiction. Eventually we have to reach that point. And you know, he certainly does tip the scales unlike any other. That's why he creates news every week. That's why he's the background right here. You know, uh, I'll report the good with the bad, but uh, you know, we need leaders like that. eh? We do. We need we need creativity, integrity. Yeah. All the stuff. David Bowie did Starman. Okay. And I'll do this now because I, I they'll probably mute it. Mm -hmm. It'll get this next little portion is okay. going to get muted, people. Um, if you're listening on YouTube, Twitch. YouTube, I'll put it. Uh, Twitch, sure. I'll put it in the video version. It, I'll try to redo the audio so you get this. They're going to mute it because I'm using a song, but I think it matched up so nicely. Um, you know, David Bowie, Star Man. Um, also, Pink Floyd is kind of like futuristic like that. Uh -huh. You've heard of Dark Side of the Moon? Yes. Uh, yep. I'll, I'll, I've heard of all of these songs. Okay. All right. So I got this uh, brick in the wall thing, and um, I just want to leave with this. I think it matches up quite nicely, uh, kind of like Dark Side of the Moon and Wizard of Oz match up together. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I matched them up together in your own little dark side of the moon launching here of today's uh, SpaceX launch. So here you go. We'll end with this. Say goodbye, Kendra. Goodbye. We'll see y'all next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Give us a like, follow us. Subscribe. Subscribe. Tell your mom, tell your friends. Thanks to Third Coast Gypsy Jazz for our other music. Yeah. All right. I got a lot of Here we go.
joining us. Once again, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Live and local, this is Shoot the Messenger. As we burn into the night like a blaze of glory. That's what we do. I got you.